Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the uh, SPSS software to analyze your data. I'm demonstrating the analysis with SPSS because SPSS is a very popular piece of software uh, in psychology teaching and in psychological research. Now, I'm going to focus on two data files uh, of all the data files that I have downloaded, data and simon.median.xl. So this first file contains the answers that people have given uh, on the survey questions, including, in this case, the age and the Edinburgh Handedness Inventory. And the Simon.median uh, data file contains the median response times in the four conditions. Now, there are six participants, but one is incomplete. So ultimately, we have only five participants. I should point out here that that would not be enough for a serious study. But here we are only demonstrating how the software works and what you can do with it. And for that purpose, it is sufficient. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open SPSS. Here in the university, we have SPSS 22. So I'm going to open that. And I wait a little bit, and there it comes. Um, I'm going to close this uh, dialog and now I'm going to open the first file uh, which is called data. Now if I click on that folder it's empty. Why is that? Well because I need to select here at the bottom the file type. These are Excel files. I chose Excel because Excel is easy to import into SPSS. I'm going to select Excel. I'm going to say open and it now asks if um, the variable names from the first row of data need to be included. That's true, that's correct, that's always the case. So you say OK. And then it reads in the data file. Now that's nice. If we look at that quickly, we see that the first variable is the participant data file. The second one is the age of the participant. And then there are the four questions of the Edinburgh Handedness Inventory and then there is the total score of that a score between minus 100 and 100 from left-handed to right-handed and then it shows the file names of the raw data files of the experiment files actually we do not need the raw data file names so i'm going to delete this so just so that i have a little bit more space on the screen i'm also going to delete this first participant uh, file name information so i've reduced it now and you know what I don't need the individual answers uh, for the Edinburgh survey. I only want the final score, so I have reduced it to just two variables of six participants. Okay, now I'm going to open a second data file. Those are the median response times in the four conditions. Again, I need to look for Excel files, and I open that file. And what it will, and I again I do the same, read variable names from the first row of data, and it opens a new uh, data frame. Now I need to combine this with these previous answers. So, how do I do this? That's actually quite easy. First of all, I'm going back to my previous window, so that where we're just working, and now I'm going to say data, merge files, add variables. Very important, don't add cases, you add variables. New variables for the same cases that we have. Every case is one participant. Now I'm going to select that one other data file that I have. I'm going to continue. I'm going to say OK. And there we go. Now you see I have four new variables. And those are those four conditions of the assignment task. That means if we look, for example, at, for, at this left pause, left arrow, this is for every participant, the median response time when they responded to a left arrow on the left side of the screen. And we have the same for the right position, left arrow, and so on. Now what we really want to do is we want to do an analysis of variance uh, with repeated measures because every participant, every of one of these here, of these six, participated in the same conditions. But note that there is an empty line here that is the participant who did not complete also what I should point out here is that these two files they line up perfectly even when they are missing data the order of the participants will always be the same these uh, Excel data files so that you can easily combine them 
Now I'm going to remove this participant because there's no data in that. And then I end with five cases and uh, six variables. Now, if I want to do an analysis of variance, which is very popular, of course, in psychology teaching and in psychological research, I'm going to analyze a general uh, linear model, and then I'm going to choose the repeated measure. There are two within subject vector names. The first is I will call stimulus position. Stimulus position. So there's the position of the stimulus on the screen, left or right, has two levels at and then I'm going the response position, which is also left or right, which is the same as the arrow direction and two levels. I'm going to add that. And then you define it. And then you basically, you have, you need to, uh, to draw these here. Um, if you haven't done this before, this might look complicated. Um, it's the way how SPSS does this. Um, that is not really the concern really of this tutorial. What I want to show you here is that Site Toolkit gives you data that you can relatively easily import in SPSS and then do your standard data analysis on them. So I've imported this now. What I would like to point out here as well is that you could add between subject factors if you have them. Uh, for example, if, if you would have an, a question in your Site Toolkit survey, what's your gender, you could compare uh, men and women. Or you can, and so on. You can have different groups. Of course, you can also then correlate these effects with, say, the handedness, uh, and so on. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to click OK, and I get a very basic um, uh, repeated measures ANOVA. I just want to say that even though I have only data, uh, uh, five data files, actually, the nice thing is the stimulus position and response, response position actually interact significantly. At least the, the value is smaller than 0.05, uh, which is something you know, actually that's nice to mention. But the main point of this tutorial is, of course, that you can do these data analysis uh, relatively easily after you've collected the data. So the nice thing is that you do not only get the raw data files from all participants, but that you can get these data files that have all the data of all participants processed.